Nurses says there's evidence of mass trauma among nurses because of COVID-19. Their report finds that the mental strain on nurses risks an exodus from the profession, which would, of course, be devastating for worldwide healthcare systems. Howard Catton is CEO of the International Council of Nurses and joins us live from Geneva. I mean, in a way, I suppose it's completely to be expected, uh, given the sort of circumstances many nurses are working in. But when you say mass trauma, what exactly are you thinking of? Uh, so you're right. We have, n we all know that nurses and health workers around the world have been under a relentless and unprecedented pressure. But what we're now seeing is evidence from right around the world of not just the physical, but also the mental health impacts that that is having on nursing staff. Symptoms of stress and anxiety increasing by 80, 90 percent. Fear that people have of going to work for fear of catching the virus, of spreading it, of taking it home to their families, increased sickness and burnout rates, uh, at least 10, 15 percent, sometimes more. There's been a few tragic cases of suicides. These are all very immediate and short term, but what we also uh, are starting to see are the longer term impacts. Uh, nurses with post-traumatic stress disorder. We don't know what the implications of long COVID are going to be either. So this is why we're saying it's a global phenomenon that's resulting in what we can only describe as this mass trauma of the nursing workforce. Is it relatively uniform around the world as, as, as far as your research can, can show or are there places where it's particularly severe? Uh, I think we're seeing the signs and symptoms uh, from right the way around the world. Uh, we're particularly concerned where health systems are under real pressure, sometimes as a result of new variants. But the evidence in terms of of uh, sickness rates, anxiety, depression, uh, those are appearing everywhere. And it's, it's, it's a complexity of this. Uh, of course, we know nurses have had to deal with uh, increased um, numbers of patients, the intensity, the physical demands, but it's then having to step into the shoes of relatives, provide emotional support where they can't be there, where there's been lack of PPE, e, people's fear of exposure to the virus, uh, but also nurses have experienced abuse and discrimination, verbal and physical, public who fear that they're spreading the disease. And can you imagine that's then compounded by these flat earther COVID deniers who are saying this whole thing's a, a, a hoax. Nurses who've been at work sacrificing and putting themselves at risk for others. And then they come out of work and they hear that. It just adds to their mental injury, their psychological pressure and distress. And I, I can see that you're worried about lots of people leaving the profession. Is it also possible that it could work in the other direction, that so many people have been praising the work nurses have done, um, that it could attract people to become nurses? Uh, uh, you're right. At this moment in time, um, we could. this could go either either way. On the one hand, we know that we already have um, a shortage of... 10 million nurses that we're going to need to replace over the next three years. If this COVID effect has an impact of driving out, say, just 10 or 15 percent more nurses, that could be half the global nurse population, 13, 14 million. We're about 77, 28 million nurses globally that we need to replace. And some people, some people say to me, look, we also see the number of deaths increasing of nurses. And now more than 2,200 nurses who tragically have died that we're aware of around the world right. is nursing the most dangerous job in the world i'm not going to go into that profession or people see that if you want a career where you absolutely make a fundamental difference to uh people's uh lives where you can improve the health of people of populations the impact that that has then perhaps nursing is the absolute best job in the world as well. Yeah, we Howard Catton uh, of the International Council of Nurses, CEO of that body, thank you very much indeed for joining us.